All right, uh, greetings, family. This is Bomani Tayamba. How is everybody doing? Excellent. All right, I'm here with my good sister, Sass, and uh, we're here to present with you our Journey for Lifetime tours every May and November to the African continent. Now, the May journey is our historical Ghana two-week journey, and that's uh, May 23rd to June 5th this year, and May 22nd to June 4th next year. And that's solely Ghana, and you're getting 13 days in Ghana, around five regions, and we're staying in four regions of the five regions, and the whole country itself has 10 regions, so you're basically gonna be driving around four regions of the country, connecting with the roots, culture, business, investment, nightlife, shopping, networking, and we have it spaced out to where you get a feel of everything. Um, and uh, my sister Sass have traveled us many, many times, uh, at least uh, several times on the journey. And she uh, is going to share a little, with a little bit more as far as her experience, as far as traveling on the journey, getting prepared, and just we, then we'll just answer questions. And the focus also will be based on the information that you've read and looked at on the website. All right. Greetings, family. Hello. It's good to be with my sisters today, especially in the home of my friend, Brenda. Thank you so much for hosting us and having an interest in Africa and Ghana. And to see you all, it's just a blessing, uh, Linda, as well. We are, we're family. I'm in the home. Uh, I'm at home here. And to be able to be invited to the African American Women's uh, Book Club and uh, to share something that is is my life it's my life it's not something i do it's more who i be it's, it's more in, intertwined with destiny so I, I don't take this lightly i'm, I'm humbled uh, it's a beautiful day we're in a beautiful environment and and ghana is rising ghana is a driving energy of the whole of africa you see it became independent in 1957 under uh, Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana, who went to Lincoln University, Pennsylvania. So I'm saying that it couldn't be a better time to even be considering the possibility of coming home to Mother Africa, specifically Ghana. Now, why would I even say that to the whole world? Because we're live on Revolutionary Cam, and Bamani has been taking people specifically to Ghana for 11 years now, going on 12. 11 going on 12. Yeah. Uh, 13 journeys, over 300 different people. Yeah. And I, I feel a uh, call for this work, in other words. It's not, it's not just business as usual with me at this point of my journey uh -huh. as an elder. I feel very honored. But Ghana specifically, as it relates to, uh, first of all, how many would be the first time going to Africa? If I just can see your, uh, just a hand go up, just for my information. Okay, first time to Africa. And how many to uh, Ghana, it would be the first for all? Mm -hmm. Second? No, first. first. First, okay, good. So, it, it, just since the time of Malcolm, like I was saying, uh, Maya Angelou, so many of our artists have come to Ghana under Nkrumah. We do go, W.E.B. Du Bois, of course, is laid to rest there. Uh, President Nkrumah said to uh, Dubois that come and finish your Encyclopedia Africana at home. Come, come home to Mother Africa to make your transition, in other words. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And he did. And one of the exciting things for me always, Bamani, is every time we always go to the most important place for anyone to go on tours. When you do the research on our website, we get people who come. And they're serious sisters and brothers of all ages and all families. And it's only increasing. And I get a little chilly with these when I say that. <laughs> All over, I just get a little chilly with You know, it's like our ancestors have beckoned many of us home. And so many of us have no interest in coming back to America at all. And these may be people that you know. I have so many friends, brothers and sisters on the other side in Ghana for 30s of years, holding the space for us to come. Not just our brothers and sisters who are there in Africa said, oh, please come home. Don't go back to America. They don't know how to treat you. Please come home, come home, come home. And you like that, like that, like that. Well, I'm at a place in my journey, sisters, where, you know, I, I, I don't have to come back to America at all. Like, 
not like have to. You know, like I said earlier, I mean, I'm an elder. I'm retired, if you will. For me, the language is reinventing. I never retire. I do what we love, right? So I'm saying that to keep the conversation very authentic because this is way before Wakanda. This, <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Ooh, I say the other, you know, but I, I, this is a love. This is a work. Uh, Ghana is so exciting on every level, on every level. Why would I say that? Because it's so natural. It's just like the island countries. The money's from Jamaica, but you think of some uh, places that you like, uh, Barbados or, you know, Costa Rica or Belize or mm -hmm. Panama. We, that's where we are. Africa all over the world. But in this conversation around Ghana, it just, I stayed two and a half months the last time I went. The other trips, journeys had been two weeks. In order to get the feel that I knew and I have such great sisters and friends like mm -hmm. here, I love them, I miss them, you know, it's a big world out here. And a lot of us, we just gravitate there. I can't say why, but it feels so good and natural that you, if you can, you don't want to come back sometimes. And that's the repatriation part, my sister. Oh, yeah. And the brothers, a lot of my brothers, the men here in America, we've been uh, subject to certain uh, activities as captives and the post-trauma of slavery that we function so well in the unnatural environments to me. Mm -hmm. It's just sad stopping, huh? But it like, I go there, I would do anything and I did on butt naked faith, rearrange my life, save my money to get to Ghana for those two weeks. And when I did, I can come back and do anything here in North America at all without, like I connect with something so essential there in my core. It could be the sun and the ocean and the, all that freedom and all the natural foods, my diet changes, my system. I mean, it's just different, right? And I come back and I do what I do. And I, But I just had to say that because everybody's unique and different. But to be open to us as African-American women, specifically to uh, coming and having an experience that that's what I, I, I live for that aspect now. When, when people, cause I, I feel like a Harriet Tubman of sorts holding the gap, saying, come on, <laughs> come on, you know, come on, home. yeah, come on, and be a part of that. We have 36 coming with us in, in a few weeks, 36 strong, about half and half brothers and sisters, right, but money. Absolutely. And that's not, that's not a big, yes, yes. Is it a cap on the number of people that you take? Um, not so much, so the goal is to stick to one bus, and the bus load we can pack usually is about 38 people okay. uh, traveling with us. Okay. Do you speak any other languages? Very little uh, as of now. Right. Uh, when I stayed the two and a half months, Thank I picked up more. Uh, the language is a tree. That's a tree. And uh, I, I know that some of the basics like good morning and madasi pa pa pa. Thank you very much. I say thank you all the time. Yeah. Even here just, in Atlanta, I just say thank is you. Is just one language or is it like in Nigeria, you have the Yoruba, the, the, mm -hmm. the Hausa, the, how are you doing? Yeah. Is it different or is it just the one? They have many uh, languages in different regions. Yeah. How are you doing, sister? Good. I'm excellent. Good to see you. Many different languages, of course, uh, on the continent. But yes. primarily, we use English really well. Yes. And uh, that's one of the things I love about it. Uh, language, uh, no, there are no barriers in communication with our people. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly, we have some great linguists. I'm not one of them uh, <laughs> at this point. I'm focusing more on the geography. Learning, moving freely, independently around, uh, like I did this these two and a half months. I love that, and I was like a martyr in Ghana. It's called Trotro. I like to go by Trotro too, and I just it's so exciting for me, particularly like again as an elder, like someone who is 66 and in the mix. Okay, and I don't mind saying I'm not my age. There's no age of spirit. Okay. However, yeah. I'm not trying to forget all that I know, uh -huh. right. particularly those who you know come from an African. Place. So what I'm saying is, to answer your question, beloved, yes, there's a diversity of languages, mm -hmm. diversity of so-called indigenous groups in different regions. Mm -hmm. But the exciting thing I love about traveling with Africa for the Africans, and I never knew that I would be going back so many times with Bamani, and, but I finally got it was a divine assignment. 
this was not like a quote a job where you punch at a clock to get a check to sure. not at all I'm an independent entrepreneur for many years mm -hmm. but the, he's like to me a Marcus Garvey of our time and so when you go into with uh, Africa for the Africans we have a phenomenal team on the ground very key our tour assistant is one of the best I've been trained every time I go. I couldn't go to an academic institution in the West or any part of the world and get the education and training I'm receiving that's so valuable to me on a soul level. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But uh, our Kobina, our tour guide, he's just phenomenal. And there's nothing that he doesn't know in so many areas around herbology or government. He is a man. He, he can tell you more. So we, our security team, our money changer, people who make sure that our capital, we learn the currency so well. Business, we enrich this economy every time we come. I so love it. I so love, it because tourism is big all over, you know. But in Ghana, the textiles, as I was talking about the wood, the, 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 the holistic industry, as I associate with, say, we have a lot of people there who just, enrich us who've been living there for over a decade and one of them is our good sister said dr sharita and dr sharita is a, a, a naturopath and her father is a, one of our leading chemists out of compton who but she's been living in ghana for tens of years and people like her support our every endeavor on so many ways we don't even have to ask because that's what we that's who we are and how we are and sometimes I think here, and this is just my opinion, we kind of forget that. Some things are just very natural to African people worldwide. We take care of our own. We look out for our own. And there's no, there's no crime as we know it. Someone said on, on my Facebook page recently that they had been back from, it was a coast war, I believe, that they had been back in the States, in the West. Not quite sure. I think maybe up north, Boston, whatever. But... And there had been like several um, killings on her block here. But in Ghana, you don't even hear or see things like that at all. Like, I'm not saying there's not crime activity. Don't get me wrong. We're talking, you know, humanity type. But not at all. I know. I feel so safe. And I'm, I feel safe wherever I go, God is. So the light of God surrounds me. You see. But I'm so taken care of as a senior, as an elder, by everyone. And respected in that way not like here mm -hmm. and I would always say when I began to fly and travel to Africa I'm gonna wrap and let you ask your questions about Ghana specifically because I could go on and on but I want to address specific questions too is that I just felt so good when I would get on a plane and fly out of America for a long time not like bad or wrong we come from families of veterans too we did Vietnam and everything trust me but I just noticed that there's a certain freedom in my soul and spirit when I would leave, as I would say, the bounds of North America in my travel. So I would tend for long distance travel, which is a Sagittarius trait. I'm true Sag, okay. Mm -hmm. But the further away I go, when Africa is calling us, it's too good to keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. I always say I want for my sisters what I want for myself. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and uh, completing one thing, we, we have a sister uh, Karen Fulton, who was uh, Emory uh, uh, co-worker, uh, sister with us in our midst, and she's an ancestor now, an angel now, and she never physically went to Ghana per se, and we had these conversations a lot. I would bring her back all the wonderful things, we'd love to bring the things you would bring back for your family to just the best ever because we have the best and that's what we give from the gold to the textiles to the woods to the semi-precious stones and any other thing that you could think of it all originated out of, of the motherland right so but karen uh said that she lit she went through ghana through me so she she didn't have to physically go to ghana I would, I, when she was in Ghana, we were all in Ghana. When I was in Ghana, she was in Ghana, vice versa, Carlos and Jamal as well, you know. But I just feel a, um, a connection with the ancestor. Uh, I pour the libations on the journey, on the high priestess on the journey. I like to make sure that people 
get, uh, and Bamani entrusted me with that. I was there when his mom came on the journey, his sister come on the journey, his little son, little Bamani, who's nine now? Uh, seven. Seven, okay, I'm making it'll a be eight. Eight. <laughs> it'll be eight. It'll be eight. In June, he back. He'll be, he's going to have a birthday in June, so he'll be eight. So he's been three times now? Uh, <laughs> he's been, he's six been, times. He's been six times. Okay. I've been with him three times. That's what it we we he and I have been on the journey three times. But anyway, your children, your grandchildren, your your husbands, the the families is is, is transformation. So uh, I've said what I kinda needed to give you a full a figure of how I relate and invest in Africa, Ghana specifically, but the attitude is, you can put that uh, over there, pick it in here, I'll show that anyway. But the, um, the attitudes around it is so beautiful because I make my friends on the journeys. So as I go so many times, I connect with the highest and the best people who have something very in common with me. And that's the love of Africa and, and so many other things. So all the journeys I've had been a part of all these royal families. And uh, that's a good way to really connect with people I found and, and I, I'm looking forward, I'm, I'm looking forward to going back again. Uh, this, uh, I'm packing now, I get it down to a fine science. How you doing, beloved? Oh, great, you're looking great, it's good to see you. Um, it's just, you learn so much by experience. You know, it's like you read a book, or you, you know, you read a book and you get an experience with a book club. Yeah. So the travel in the book club conversation is like the person who like baking cake and you know, you want to eat the cake. So we're, Ghana, I could give you so many books about Ghana and stories and people we're writing them ourselves, you know, so many beautiful stories. But again, I'm just honored that Bamani and I are here talking about something we love so much. Thank you. Appreciate this uh, saying that to me. Uh, just say a few things before we close. Uh, I started this business uh, in 2006, uh, and that's based on uh, traveling to many different other African countries. The first set of countries that I started traveling to was uh, in 2004. That's after one year of you know the studying about Africa. That's from two th 2003 to the beginning of 2004. That whole year, and I just couldn't help myself beyond just wanting to go. So I booked uh, two journeys. The first journey was. Uh, in uh, March of 2004, and that was to uh, Senegal. And that's where I first learned about the African Holocaust. I went to actual dungeons that our ancestors were held, and that completely changed my life. Then a month later, I went to uh, Egypt, uh, April 2004, and I saw the greatness of our ancestors. So that one year right there, that initial year, and of studying and going, this changed my whole life. And uh, 2005, I went to other countries, uh, South Africa, Kenya, also went back to Senegal. In uh, 2006, went to the Gambia, which is a tropical country right in the middle of West Africa, Miami, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And then later on, in December 2006, we did our first tour on the Africa for the Africans. And mm -hmm. we, it was eight of us, and we just went and just, just checked out the country uh, for this fact finding mission. And from there on, we started traveling to the African continent just uh, nonstop. But that initial journey right there was based on what you see right there in your hands, this postcard and this years. I show back there, there's a, there's a journey on here that shows uh, October 2007. That was the second journey we took. It was 42 of us. It took about 10 years later, uh, November 2017, before we made, topped that journey, it was uh, 43 of us. But uh, that initial energy in Ghana has changed our life. So what we talk about now is just based on our experience of traveling uh, connecting with people and also um, setting things up for people t that are living there now that was just ready to move and they just needed certain connections. So we opened up a world to just connect our brothers and sisters from the African diaspora. And also on the November journey, we opened it up, say if somebody loved Ghana and they want to try look to connect other African countries. This November we have Ethiopia and Tanzania. Next November we have South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe and Botswana. And as time go along, and we build staff and build things, look to this, be able to accommodate people who can't go, go to certain countries at certain times and people who have smaller groups or people are looking for optional journeys. So uh, thanks for listening to our presentation and uh, sharing the, and 
looking at the details prior to our conversation. So we just want to open things up to just uh, answer as many questions as possible and give full clarity of anything anyone needs to know. Well, I do have a couple of questions. And you have great information on your website, Africa for Africa for the Africans. Um, but um, I see where there's a visa process. Right. How far in advance do you have to apply for the visa? And is there a set price? Or does it change, the price change every year? Oh, perfect, great question. Uh, the visa process, uh, you have a three-month visa. That's good for, um, you have a three-month visa that's uh, $60. And it's good for three months. So literally, uh, you apply for that visa two months before you leave. That way it doesn't expire. Now you have another visa, it's a multiple entry. It's good for one to five years, and that's uh, $100. So that visa, you just want to do, I would say do that one anywhere like six months the earliest before you leave. So whenever we do visa process, the goal is to just get rid of the visa process ahead of time. And all the documents that you need initially will get to you. Uh, so you can just uh, access it and be clear on everything right away. Okay. An excellent question. The, and the co conference calls are available for anyone that's traveling with Africa for the Africans. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say when I went, it, uh, I didn't even have a laptop at that time. Mm -hmm. I've become very technologically groomed because technology is one of Bamani's businesses. Mm -hmm. but, but at the same time, sometimes seniors and people and just different people, his life is different in different states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. The things I, I know about Africa for the Africans is that particularly Bamani was never too busy to walk me through a, a process or any level or group it to others who didn't, wasn't comfortable with the process, even passport application, visas, any of the things that are needed to have what we call the journey of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's what is said on the website too, is that join us for the journey of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to have those words become fulfilled, there are certain things that you have to do. And I can't say that uh, we're perfect in that, but I can say one of the reasons I'm still in line with Bomani is because I one, I never seen or met anybody that represent that is doing what he is doing. To me, he is the Marcus Garvey of our time. And if, for me, if Marcus Garvey was here, I would be with him the red, the black, and the green. Do you hear? In other words, everybody's different, but his commitment for that first time has kept me coming back and working to bring what I can to improve it, because that's what, who we are as well in that way. So yeah, good question about that. And another one, um, the itinerary is great. We do a lot of moving around. Um, do you have um, handicap accessibility for people who may need it? Uh, like yeah. getting on and off the bus and excellent question absolutely um we, that we can uh, accommodate uh, in a wheelchair situation that i would have to confirm with our tour guide but uh, we have lots of assistance around mm -hmm. the whole time mm -hmm. uh, that way you always have someone to assist you at all points okay. and in that situation we'll just uh, set up a game plan to where we just work it out but we just need full details about that that specific situation with that person okay thanks mm -hmm. excellent so you said earlier that um, like next year it's like the 13 day tour and we would travel by bus and you can accommodate 30 people, 38 people on the bus. Mm -hmm. Yes. So right. my question is, is that, um, and I forgot you said it was eight regions so we'll be traveling to uh, it's, uh We'll be traveling around five regions, five, and, five regions. and staying in four okay. of the 10 regions. Okay. Oh, 10 regions. It's 10 regions all together and we're going around five as far as driving and touring, but we're lodging in four of them. Okay, so what I wanted to know was is how much uh, time um, of that time is spent on the bus? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, it's, it, it, and it varies. Uh, let me give you some hours of the, the, the journey. Excellent question. Since once we leave from Accra, the capital city, when we're there, we don't drive around much. Uh, the longest drive I want to say we have is 45 minutes to get to the first site. Uh, and then the same thing for another day. And then in between, you, the drives are short. The drive will come long when you're leaving from one region to the next. Now, when we leave from Accra, which is considered a great Accra region, we're going to drive up to the Brown Hafa region. Now, that's going to be the longest drive. It's seven hours. So you're leaving from the southern part of the country, seven hours into the center of the country. And that's where we have, we open up the world of sustainable living, uh, permaculture, and also we have two land sites, our business enterprise that we build in for the future, and a um, repatriation sustainable community that anyone who wants to be a part of a community 
you know, they can check it out to where they can purchase land from that uh, community and live there and just be a part of a, a, a group. So the, the goal was to do something further out into the country, so that's as far as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, any further than that is while we're on tour in that area, we'll drive about another hour up to the waterfalls. Uh, but beyond that, other, other drives are like five hours, three hours, mm -hmm. and that's from region to region. You're literally driving around a big country like Ghana. Right. Okay. And just All right. a quick question. What part of Africa is Ghana located? It's uh, in the, I would say like the heart of West Africa. Okay. And the coordinates um, in one of its, uh, in, the, in the Accra region is called Tema. It's uh, coordinates of zero degrees longitude and zero degrees latitude. So you're literally in the center of the earth or the planet. Okay. okay. So, um, and, and I'm assuming this, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. So. You know, a lot of times when you're taking a tour, um, it can be very touristy, you know. So my interest in actually going to Ghana with Africa for Africans is to have more of a, um, a realistic uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So I'll, is this going to be... It's, so as re it's as real as uh, you can get for the first time. Uh, any real, uh, you'd have to, I would recommend do like SAS and other people have done, which is stay back an extra week or two weeks and then stay with one of our folks that used to live here in Atlanta or other parts of the African diaspora mm -hmm. and just enjoy like a week with them uh, going around places and getting that other ground to feel and then another one would be if you want to stay in like a village village for a week so the, the tour and those three completes it but the tour itself gives you an introduction into everything itself mm -hmm. it's just when you're dealing with uh, People who are, are taking two weeks off their work and their life in America, you know, you have to make sure you have the air-conditioned bus. Okay. Uh, we're not, we don't do five-star hotels to make it that touristy, but the hotels are three, two to three-star hotels owned by uh, Ghanaian uh, business people. And then we have some incredible hotels uh, towards the end of the tour that's more of like a bed and breakfast, home feel by the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, you get a little bit of everything, like uh, you have tourist, tourist sites, uh, like the African Holocaust dungeons, that's one of the most popular, but even in that situation, I don't look at it as a tourist site, but yeah. uh, with, you're going to be in with people that mm -hmm. are, are just high on a tourist mindset and some people, they're like ready to like live there and move, but uh, that's what makes the journey uh, incredible because you're mixed in with different groups of uh, brothers and sisters from the African diaspora and we're sharing a common experience. Of, and for the most part, all of us, are it's our first time actually coming into the country, so that makes it even more special. And one of the things I want to put right there is what makes Africa for the Africans most unique are the brothers and sisters who've gone before us that meet and greet us and welcome us there. Some of them are innkeepers who just never came back to Brooklyn, you know? <laughs> 30 years strong families. I mean, it's just an expansion. This is the part that just gets me because it's something in my consciousness I always remember wanting to create. And it, for me, it's like being bi or tri-continental, you know, living on different continents. Atlanta's here and we love it. What a Midwest, but you know, but Amakus and so many pioneers, sisters and brothers, husbands, some of them have transitions, they're on the ancestor realm and their whole families are there and they 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 want to make sure that we're taken care of and they know us. They're they're a little different from our brothers, our African brothers who take care of us too, you see? And that's that's something that is quite wonderful to have the experience of when you go from home as you know it here. To, to home there, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and that home there becomes just more appealing and natural. That's what happened. I had to just say that because it took a year off when I came back, and then I became a first-time grandmother. <laughs> and, <'cause> then, <laughs> <laughs> Another question. Sure. Um, you have your pricing on the website, which is great. But do you have payment plans, or is it just a one-time payment, and do you offer travel insurance? Uh, no travel insurance. Uh, we have a link that usually just give uh, recommendations to, like, Passport Health uh, USA. Um, uh, as far as the uh, breakdown, on the, on the tour list, as far as the list of different articles, once you click on the, the Ghana May uh, 2019 tour link, you'll see a general terms. The general terms represent uh, also just an idea of a breakdown, mm -hmm. and also we have a payment options which is just a different link okay. right below uh, the tour links 
and it gives you a kind of generic uh, breakdown. But what we recommend is um, make a deposit and then once you make a deposit you can pace yourself or you can pay the balance two months before we leave when all balances are due for airline tickets and also lodging and transportation. An initial deposit is just needed right away just to lock down reservations and get the tour going. Okay. I did the layaway plan on all of mine. Look, here's the conversation world. I know the world listening, so we do everything live on Revolutionary Cam. I've never had a credit card in my life. Like I said, I'll be 67 December 6, 6 o'clock p.m. But I've always been a cash and carry girl. Give me your cash and I'll carry it to my bank. <laughs> no, but that's what is true. Even to Kemet, when Dr. A.C. Hilliard took me home to the Valley of the Nile, which is another phenomenal experience in travel for me. Layaway. I always did. That's the only way to fly for me. It's like that which I'm committed to are experiences that are life transformational for me. They're not always in the realm of the things which I do love things too, but I saw the travel piece is where my investments have gone pretty much in, in libraries, my personal library and art and things that you like, you know what I'm saying, y'all? But so yeah, the layaway plan works so well with Bamani for me because that's again one of the things that kept me uh, coming back is the workability. You know how you want to have an experience, but you've never had the experience, and you may or may not be around folk who've had the experience that you want to have, right? So when I lined up with that, it didn't have an age thing. We're getting things done. The kinds of things that you're committed to, like land and investments and real food with non-GMO stuff, you know? Like things that I get education in, so yeah, the layaway, the payment options, like say now, we're getting ready to leave in a few weeks, May the 23rd, but we're accepting deposits for next year, May. Mm -hmm. And that's good because sometimes, even in my mind, I just be wanting to get up out of here. Like, get out. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are going on in our world. Gotcha. And I have, like I said, my one daughter, <coughs> she's 26, and she had my first grandson. And I, it, that came in while I was in Ghana last year. I'm so thankful to the Creator and the ancestors that this is a motive, more of a motivation in going back. It's just when I tell Babani, I said, I have a lot at stake. And you know, tomorrow is not promised. I don't want to postpone the dreams that we have. Yes, my beloved. And two more questions that related. Um, I know the price is based on double occupancy, but what if you have three people, three adults that you want to be in a room? Can you accommodate that, or is only allowed for double occupancy? Yes, it's only allowed to two two people around. Yeah, okay. two, two is a company, three is a crowd. Okay. So the next question is, if you are a family of three, right. like husband, wife, child, is that allowable? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Right. And we've had that many times. The the one thing about husband, wife, child. And then that's where you have the you know, family, we go into the family, uh, family deal. Yeah, we have a family deals for a family of three or four. And we have families. The thing I would be remiss if I didn't say is transformation takes place. You will not be the same being coming back. Mm -hmm. So even if you call it a, 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 just a regular tour, in my opinion, the place that we're touring is holy. Mm -hmm. And it's holy and sacred to me because most of the research, and you can do it your own, shows that many of us came as captives from those dungeons that we go back to. Yes, Cape Coast and Elmina. Yeah, and because of it, it's just like going into e ancient Egypt and ancient Kemet with Baba Asa, Dr. Asa Hilliard the Third, nine by four. The energy still there. Yeah, yeah. So it's a. Some of us, the door of no return, you familiar with the door of no return? That's one of the uh, historical sites in the dungeons. It was called that because we weren't supposed to return there, back to that place, as, as Africans here in America. You understand that? And, and throughout all of wherever we, we are, and we are all over there. But yeah, it's, it's that kind of. So uh, families are important. Why would I say that? Because I've seen mothers and husbands and the, with their young children bringing home. And what a beautiful experience that it is. 
it say like if you went and sometimes your husband may not go and you may not and you come back you would be like a whole different being so sometimes it's so good who's the biggest family that we had uh, on the journey with family of seven so we're in a family of five five uh, <coughs> mother father son and then um you know, two uncles mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a beautiful thing i won't ask all the questions I'll ask one more. So in, in your um, itinerary, you have some places where it's a 7 p.m. dinner. and I, Is that dinner on your own, or is it uh, some arranged? Um... A perfect. Great question. Uh, all the dinners are arranged, and it's based on when everyone submit their, you know, basically what they eat, their diet, mm -hmm. uh, which is on one of the sheets that we, you know, we send to get a reply back on. Mm -hmm. So we put together a nice gourmet buffet, and usually it's a combination of vegetarian, vegan, uh, chicken, fish, and then uh, other side dish, okay. and it's uh, and then it's cha it uh, changes a little as you go around the different uh, parts of the region, mm -hmm. and then there's a few uh, times that we do go out to like a like a quote unquote like a restaurant, mm -hmm. and we have, we have meals already organized, and we just enjoy a night out. Okay. And if us as a group decide we want to go, how soon do we need to let you know since you really do have limited space? Uh, if you're open to going and the dates are clear for May uh, of next year, uh, ideal thing is uh, jump on the early uh, discount that we have and uh, make a deposit uh, between uh, this month and uh, next month and then just get started early and then pace yourself and if you, um, if you decide that uh, it's not going to work for you and you, you want to try another tour date then we can transfer you without any loss of cost. Um, Weather-wise, is there a better time to go as a May, May to November or whatever? I've been there both times. Um, I prefer uh, May and that's kind of also the reason why I adjusted the schedule. Uh, somehow during the October, November we would end up the part of the country that we want to go to the most where we're going to share with you the land sites and everything. It tend to rain around that time. Um, none of us are like rain gods but uh, this schedule literally worked out to where it was perfect uh, last time we went to Ghana. How, how was your experience in Ghana? Yeah, May. Uh, May, and I had been in November all the time, but May I prefer. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, like I said, I stuck around a couple months longer. And it's just like, tr just the most tropical best time for me. And the rains are just like sh showers that cleanse, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not like, even in the rainy season, which um, it's May. Usually, it's usually the summertime, mm -hmm. so. So that's why the, the tour was season. usually before or after the rainy season. Mm -hmm. That way we didn't do a tour like in July and it rained three out of the four days. You know, which it wouldn't be bad. We can always work it around that. But as you can see on our tenor, we have full days where every day we have, we're getting charged for the bus. So we're going to take the bus off for those who want to get on the bus. And we just have a full day of tour. And full day of tour is basically between 8.30 to 4.30. And you just mentioned something, and I'm going to stop. Sure. Um, you have the itinerary, which is great, but you, as as an individual, you don't have to participate in everything that's on that itinerary if you do not choose to, correct? Exactly. You just have to pay for everything. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one thing I want to just say real quick in completing, because sometimes we have elders with special needs mm -hmm in terms of the handicap accessibility is a very important question. We've had some uh, soldiers uh, who are so mature travel with us. And I say that out of St. Louis, uh, just and I say that with, it, it's amazing what the motivation can become to get someone there because whether you're 80 years young, yeah. 80 years young, uh, 78 years young, uh, I worked out of Fulton County, I gotta say this, uh, facilities before I kind of completed doing that last year. And all of my students were 55 to 100 years young. The Darnell, Bowden, Mills, and Benson facilities were my calligraphy classroom. So they travel with us, some of the individuals there. And I like it. I like when retirees who have the time and sometimes the resources don't overlook Africa. And I, that's, I was a stand for that, and so they began to happen more out of our facilities, not just Ghana. But it, like I said, it's a big world out here, and so I just again want to acknowledge and ask any, came in a little bit later, beautiful queen, any questions again before we prepare to you know go to our next appointment, because y'all are just, those good questions will be asked, not make sure I give you my cards as well, 
because it may be a question that you want to discuss and you may not want to do it publicly because we are, of course, sharing what we do with the rest of the world because it's important. It's very important. Good. Well, if we have any other questions, we will definitely reach out to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, sisters. Thank you. Oh, and just another plug for your your website. You have great information on there. You have past years on there so people can see that. You have the conference call information and links to all of the resources or questions of payment, the visas, checklists for when you get ready to go. So it's a lot of great information on your website. Well, appreciate it. Uh, did, uh, did anyone see it? Uh, Thank you. Did anyone check out the YouTube page uh, from the uh, website? Mm -hmm. And um, once you t turn to the back of the card, you see the YouTube link. And uh, once you uh, click on the page, you'll see this a list of videos. When you scroll down to the videos, you'll see playlists. Playlists will be um, like the last tour we took to Ghana, Ghana, November 2017. List of those videos. You'll see a Brazil and an Ethiopia uh, based on the, the videos that we took <coughs> previous, previous years. The other thing that you'll see is uh, conference calls and interviews and the business and investment conference uh, videos. So, and then on and on, uh, I've just created a lot of playlists because we shoot a lot of videos. So we have over about 1,200 videos, and most of it is about Ghana and traveling to Africa. So not expecting anybody to watch all of them, but just, uh, we have them just organized in playlists to make it easier. This is show documentation. And I wanted us to just reach out for final questions. Oh, cool. Well, complete. Thank you. Perfect. I appreciate everybody. <laughs> Y'all are great.